What it do, baby? What's good? What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's a boy Shingy as usual. You already know what it is. Uh, I'm super excited to be making this video. Well, I am not as excited because I'm gonna be sharing with you guys my secret. That is hurting me. It's hurting me. I want to show you guys how I scan my phone. It's not really a crazy secret because you guys, some of you guys probably do the same thing, but there's a certain way, a little pizzazz that I do when I'm scanning my film that gives me certain tonality. So with that being said, without further ado, welcome to Scanning with Shingy. I'm going to be scanning some film photos with you guys today. So you guys are going to get to see the knobs I push and you guys are also going to see the way my settings are, what I use and all that type of stuff. And yeah, it's kind of stressful, but it's not because there's different multiple ways that I do this. I'm doing, I'm not doing a portrait. A portrait is a little bit different. Like a very clean portrait is very different from how I scan it because there's tones in there, like really involved. The photo that I'm going to be scanning, it doesn't really have like crazy tones. Like it's, it's just more of like a feel, like a scenic. It's of a person, but it's not like a portrait portrait, like right in the face. It's not really that. But without further ado, I'm going to try to keep this video as short as possible. I'm going to tell you guys what I'm going to be using. I am currently on PC no longer on Mac and I use Epson scan the original one and my scanner of choice my scanner of choice is the Epson v600 why did I pick the Epson v600 because um the reason why I picked Epson v600 is because I actually found it <laughs> i got lucky with it it was a deal and i was like okay i'll pick it up i got it a value village i wanted a scanner it was literally early days when i started wanting to shoot film and doing it seriously so i was like literally manifesting getting a scanner and then i ended up getting one but with that being said that's what i'm going to be using and also the photo that i'm using i shot it on the mamiya rz67 and portrait 400 i believe yes yep Portrait 400 confirmed. We're gonna expect a little bit of grain and it's gonna be pretty, pretty awesome. I shot in a really good sunlight. Pretty excited for it. First thing, I do lay down my film flat. I'll show you guys. Ugh, it can't focus. But as you guys see, it is flat on the flatbed and it is very tricky to align it. I, this video would have taken forever if I was to lay it down for you guys, but it is really like legitimately, there's nothing else here. Like it is laying flat because I get a lot of questions about, oh, Shingy, do you really lay it down flat? Oh, this, you're going to get Newton rings. You're going to get this. To be honest, I really don't care. If I get Newton rings, I will just rescan and they usually go away or like I'll just move the film a little bit up or down and they'll go away or I don't mind editing them if unless they're really 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 serious but for the most part 90% of the time I don't get Newton rings so this is how I do it this is not the way to do it or this is not the only way to do it but this is how I scan my own film so do keep that in mind but with that being said I'm gonna switch to the computer right now and let's continue let's continue I'm gonna actually scan some photos for y'all Okay guys, so I'm on my computer right now and this is how Epson scan looks when you first open it and you're gonna go to professional mode. This is the mode that I'm usually on. I just recently changed my SSD. So like I just literally re-downloaded um, Epson scan. So perfectly enough, I'm gonna run through all the settings that I would normally put on here. So right here on documents, I'll put film of course and I'll go color negative. And in terms of bit rate, I'll go uh, 48 bits. I'm not sure what it does, but I just guess the higher the bit rate, the better, the better the color. So um, that's my understanding of it. <laughs> that's not the most accurate thing to say, but yeah, that's pretty much what I pick. I got to get comfortable. Hold on, guys. I got to light some incense. Okay. So in every editing process, I need incense. If I don't smell incense, my editing process is gonna be doo doo. It's gonna be boo boo, to do boo boo. So I gotta light some incense because I'm actually gonna take this scan very very seriously. You know what I'm saying? I am not going to make it mediocre. So now that we lit some incense, we're gonna come back to the infamous desk where the magic happens, and we're gonna tune back in to the screen. So okay, back to the screen. Resolution. I usually go with 3200, but when I'm scanning things that are not as important, I will go 
2400, which means it's going to be a faster scan and the file is going to be a lot smaller. However, if I was to do important stuff, I'll go 32 or 48, but I heard 48 is not even possible. Like I heard it's like a gimmick. You can't really scan 48. I don't know. But if you do know, comment down below and let me know if I'm just talking doo doo. But um, yeah, I would. I want to pick 2400. It's just a photo that I'm going to drop on my Instagram as well as maybe potentially if I really, really like it on my website. So um, I'll pick 2400. And then over here, I only keep the unsharpened mask on. I do not do grain reduction. I do not do color restoration because when you do color restoration it's a computer it will guess and epson scan is a pretty old program it will guess colors and whatever it guesses i don't like the colors so i don't touch any of that uh backlight correction i don't touch any of that dust removal definitely don't touch it uh in my opinion because again it's a computer it's going to use this ar to sort of like guess what it's supposed to be but I know what it's supposed to be when I go with my pen and I'm able to take those things hand one by one out to retain the information and to retain the colors correctly. Digital ice technology, I don't touch any of that. I only touch unsharpened masks. So now we're going to run a preview. Hopefully I laid it down really good because usually when you lay it down on the, on the thing, it's kind of crooked. But if it is, I don't know. I might just continue. But like, no, I'm going to make it perfect. I, I just cannot do things halfway so like i'm gonna make sure it's perfect but um i think i pretty did a good job like, you get used to it when you're laying down flat you get really used to it you get really really used to like just knowing where it's supposed to be i don't know why i've been getting that random error message okay so you see that it, it did come out crooked it did come out crooked oh yeah it's crooked all right so let's try this so these are the struggles <laughs> of legit laying down flat if you guys have a conversation with marcus and i we, if we talk about scanning film if we say we hate scanning it's not literally because we hate the photography or the process we just hate laying it down i'm gonna try ar glass apparently this glass that people say is really good um i'm gonna try it out um hopefully i'll be able to get it soon um yeah because everybody that everybody on the channel has been like recommending that i do that and yeah i think i'm gonna give it a shot but like i don't know i'm kind of lazy you know i hate waiting for things i don't like ordering things online i'm really like old-fashioned go in the store pick it up and then haha <laughs> there it is there it is but this glass that i'm talking about apparently it gets rid of new earrings apparently it's actually max sharpness what is going on what is going on here what is going on okay Shingy, you got this. There we go. I think I got it now. I use I use I use the guides on the sides. But like I was saying, um this glass, I heard it gets rid of new rings and apparently because so the scanner is actually a camera that is taking an image. That's why you're able to use a camera as well to to sort of like do scans. It's pretty much a camera and it has a perfect placement for sharpness and that perfect placement for sharpness the ar glass puts it in the most perfect way so um when you have the 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 the, the, the what do you call those things the, the trays apparently they're not even in the perfect level of the ar like of the of the glass of not the glass of the camera it's not total sharpness and it's pretty boo-boos and i don't understand why they have that those holders are so trash my photos were not sharp at all. When I took them off, they were so sharp. So in here, guys, I usually inc include the borders in all my images, unless there's an image that is fitting for no borders. So right now, since I do notice it's a little bit crooked, I'm gonna include some of the blacks without including a lot. If you include all the blacks, you will get like a completely different color rondation, re rendering, rondation, whatever. I think rondation is a word. I'm pretty good at English rendering you get a weird rendering of the colors so um i try to avoid going too too deep into the blacks but with that being said it's gonna do its thing it's gonna run the preview right now and then i'm gonna show you guys what i tweak oh perfect so over here i'm actually gonna i have a lot of blacks in there bruh bruh you see that do you see the, look what happens this is what happens when you add too much blacks you see that 
the colors are not true to the actual tones. Not sure why that is, but I just know that's what happens. So the, the more you're into the photo, the more you're gonna get color. So take a look at this. This is the coolest thing. Your colors are gonna be a lot more accurate the less blacks you include. This is how the program reacts. So if I was to do like a generic scan, these colors are pretty accurate, but I don't want that. I don't like that. I like when it's a bit flatter and it's a little bit washed out and it gives me room to edit in uh, Lightroom and all that type of stuff. So I usually include all the borders, all the borders as well as a bit of blacks, just a little bit. I try to avoid going into the blacks, to be honest with you. But um, it, it has a pretty good idea of knowing to say, okay, he doesn't want to include every everything. So this would be how I would start editing the photo. So right now, just looking at the photo, um, I'm gonna go into my adjustments. This is the the histogram. Histogram. <laughs> this is our histogram. So in the histogram. What I usually do is I usually pull all the blacks down so I get the true, true blacks, right? I wanna get the, I wanna, when you add shadows, guys, it adds a definition to the photo. So let, let's take a look at this. So if you move this over here, there's less definition. It's a lot flatter, right? But when you move it all the way here, you start seeing her hair, her cheekbones, everything is more in detail. And then over here, Depending on if I overexpose or underexpose, this photo was taken on perfect exposure. It was highly intentional because I did want to blow up the highlights just a bit and I wanted this shadow over here. So with that being said, I also pulled up the blacks here back a little bit. Actually not back, a little bit forward and the middle, the mid tones a little bit up. So I'll, I'll retain those greens in the back. So this is the other trick guys. This is the other thing that you guys gotta know. When you overexpose a photo, you're losing some details. Yes, you might be gaining highlights and all those type of stuff. Yes, portrait can handle it, but you're also losing information. Yes, it could handle it, but it's not saying, when they say it could handle it, it doesn't mean you could, it's, it's a raw file. It's not a raw file. You're not going to be able to edit it like you could edit a digital file. So do keep that in mind. You are going to lose some detail. But with that being said, underexposing, overexposing, whatever, it's your choice. I usually overexpose in certain situations that I know the background does not matter at all. In this case, I shot box speed because I knew I'm going to need, need the background. So back to the edit. Um, after that, what I usually do, I usually leave it like this. I have the detail on her face as well as the highlight as well as the sky. So now I'm going to leave that and I'm going to go to the image adjustment. And then in, in here is where I will also try to just add a little bit of contrast. And if the photo is too bright, I'll just kind of like pull it just a little bit back or zero. Um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'll keep it right here. So it's, ah, I'll keep the contrast there. And here's another trick, guys. I was already sort of doing this when I was editing. Avoid looking at the graph. Avoid looking at this, this graph right here. Avoid looking at how much you're adding and how much you're taking away. Because when you do that you're and you just look at the image, you're being true to your eye and what your eye sees. For me, whenever I look at the graph, I feel like I need to add one or minus one. In this case, I literally was hovering over it. I was like, oh, you know what? I like this point. And it's okay if you don't move the slider, it's fine. <laughs> that means you're in the perfect position that you like. You don't need to push push the slider. That's why when I was, when I was moving it, you're probably like, shit, you're not putting any value or you didn't add anything. That's because I genuinely like where the photo is at right now, right? And sometimes I do like adding highlights to the photo later in post, but that's pretty much it. And now here's where I also add natural colors, guys. So here's where, um, I don't know how to exp explain this. In this photo, there's natural colors. There's yellows and there's also um, greens and there's a bit of blues. Those don't matter as much because they're in the back. So her skin tones are brown. 
What's the closest thing to brown? Blues. No, not blues. Yellows, right? And another thing is her skin naturally has reds, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the yellow slider back here to add some yellows. And I'm going to move the red slider just a little bit to make it a little bit warmer. And now, because the background is green, I'm actually going to add it just a tinsy wincy little bit of green just a little bit not a lot just a little bit the most subtlest things matter the most so let me readjust these reds i'm gonna actually pull them back a bit i'm gonna add a little bit of yellow in there just a bit and close that and then go back here and then i'm gonna go on to my tone correction okay so tone correction so over here I'm going to actually darken the shadows some more because I already retained the face detail and that's okay. And then now I'm gonna go back even here in the mid-tones and drop that just a little bit as well. And in the highlights, I'm gonna drop just a, you know, I wanna keep the highlights. I wanna keep the highlights and if I need to readjust them in the future, I will readjust them. So this would be a perfect scan for me i'm gonna actually scan it and close this close that and i want to scan this right and i'm also gonna just do like as a bonus as a yeah as a bonus i'm actually gonna drop it into lightroom for you guys and i'll show you guys how i'm gonna adjust it a little bit further um this was just supposed to be a how to scan but who cares? I'm just gonna do the rest of it. Oh yeah, so my camera died, but I have on a second battery. But the photo is up now. Um, here's a photo in Lightroom, and I'm going to go and make the adjustments that I would regularly make. So right here, my first instincts is to go to my preset. This preset, guys, is free and is available on my website on waybetterco.com. It's free, free. <laughs> totally free so what i usually do is i just kind of go through these presets and sort of see what i want and how i want the photo to feel so right here i'm kind of leaning towards a warm feel i am going to adjust that i don't like how it's really really warm so what i'm going to do is i'm going to drop my portrait um my portrait preset because i shot portrait and it should really react really well so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to add some contrast because i did scan it really really flat now I'm gonna lower the highlights. And guys, here's another really cool thing that, um, wait, I just, I actually missed something, guys. I missed something. I missed something. Okay, so here's another big tip. So when scanning this, I should have scanned it as a TIFF file. Okay, so I messed up. Scan your photos as TIFFs because when you scan them as TIFFs, when you are going through the whole editing process, it's going to be a lot easier for you to make adjustments and the computer is gonna have an easier time readjusting. So a TIFF file is like a raw file, but obviously this is not a raw file. It's it's literally not a raw, it's not a raw file. It doesn't have raw cap capabilities built into it, but when I am going to start editing it, it's going to be less um, muddy, less harsh, and it's going to react a lot better. So scan your net, scan your negatives in, scan your scans in TIFF. Major key, major major key. So I'm gonna fast forward all this and then go back to rescan it. I'm gonna re-upload it on Lightroom and stuff. Okay, so back to editing, guys. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop the portrait, like I said earlier, and I'm going to add a bit of contrast. Wow, you see that? it is already reacting a lot different from the jpeg that's why i was able to catch it because a tiff file reacts so differently from a jpeg a jpeg is very very muddy so um right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a little bit of contrast because i did scan it flat um i'm going to lower the highlights just a little bit and i'm gonna lower some of the whites just a little bit again and i'm gonna bring up the shadows just a bit the black point i'm gonna drop that a lot because i love a lot of black points so the black point from my understanding it really just darkens the blacks really it doesn't really affect the shadows just the black so over here i'm actually gonna use dehaze for sure guaranteed so we just get rid of that washed out highlight in the sky and I'm gonna bring the clarity up just a little bit, just ever so slightly. And then now I'm gonna go on the on the 
tone curve layer and I'm gonna like drop this you know what I really am liking this I'm gonna actually grab this over here because I don't want to lose the face detail and I'm gonna bring that up so this this adjusts where I want it and again do not look at the graphs guys the graphs will play a trick on you and then I want to actually go right into the deep shadow and I'm gonna bring this down there we go there we're getting those yummy colors now because that gruff graph is looking really, really good. I wanna pull down the highlights just a bit. And then now what I'm gonna do is I wanna go on my split tone curves layer. Um, I'm really liking this so far. That's pretty much it. That's all I really do. That's that's just really it. I'm, I'm pretty happy. What I'm gonna do after this, I'm gonna drop it into Photoshop and then I'll edit it just a little bit. But this is pretty much it. That's my whole scanning and editing process in a nutshell without adding Photoshop and cleaning up the image and adding a little bit more color to it. But this is a complete image pretty much. This is pretty much all I do. Um, I do want it to be a little bit more yellower and a little bit warmer. So I'm gonna go my temp and I'm gonna bring this up a bit. Just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. Right there. I think, yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. I'm gonna bring some of the greens down a bit as well. You know what? No, let's add a little bit of magenta. Yeah. But, yes, yeah, so guys, that is pretty much, pretty much it for the video. If you really like this video, give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me and the channel. I hope you guys learned something from my editing process. There's not really much to learn. I just, it, it's just all by ear. It's my style. So, like, it's sort of like I just know what I want and what my eyes want to see. And I just adjust it accordingly. But I really do hope it kind of gave you guys an idea of how I do and Especially, I used to use like color restoration. That really ruined my photos. And some of the other presets that are in there, those also ruined my, my, my photos. I also tried Silverfast. I tried a lot of these other programs. They just don't work as well as Epson for me. But with that being said, guys, thank you guys again. Follow me on Instagram at Shop by Shingy. Check out my portfolio at shopbyshingy.com. And check out my brand, waybetterco.com. If you want to support me by buying some merch and potentially helping me buy a future camera for the channel please go make a purchase and last but not least follow in hashtag at we photo gods to be featured guys i've been super busy i have a bunch of shoots coming it's been really tough for me to find time to sort of um do uh repost on instagram on we photo gods but i'm going to really really try to aim to do that tomorrow because i do have a day off from work and all that type of stuff so yeah i'm pretty excited i hope you guys are all good and positive and happy I hope you guys go shoot thank you to everybody that supports me i'm very happy i'm in a really good place thank you and it's all because of you thank you guys thank you guys and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also turn on your post notifications so you get a message whenever I upload. Awesome! Thank you! Ha! Ha 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 ha! Dishes!